What if I told you that your brand could be loved by millions of people just with one product launch? Well, it can, thanks to licensing. Licensing has been one of the key reasons for the Udi's success, doing over a hundred million dollars in famous licenses such as Disney, Warner Brothers, Nickelodeon, even Pokemon. In this video, I'm gonna go through exactly what to do and what not to do so that you can launch licensing for your brand. It doesn't matter if you're a tiny brand and you're just getting started, these tactics can work. But it's really, really important that you understand all of the risks with licensing as well so that you don't actually lose money rather than make it. At the end of 2020, I was really trying to figure out where I could take the UDI. At that point, I'd created all the prints myself using meme culture. Every time I would see memes pop up, such as avocado on toast, there was a famous politician that said Australians should stop eating avocado on toast so that they could save on a home loan. I would launch that UDI and it would connect with those people. Same with the sloth reading the book. People could just understand who that UDI was meant for. But I was running out of ideas and I didn't know where to take it. Then we decided to start working with Warner Brothers, one of the biggest licensers in the world. Growing up, I was a huge Friends fan. I used to just watch Friends nonstop. And I thought it had the perfect affinity with the Udi because people just love watching TV in their Udi. Warner Brothers also had Harry Potter, which I was also a big fan of. So naive to what was gonna come next, we decided to just grab these assets, put them on the Udi and do our first license launch. Still living with my parents at the time, I remember launching it and we did over $500,000 in just a few weeks, completely selling out. If I actually knew how to do inventory management back then, it could have been a lot, lot bigger. You see, licensing is the process of borrowing another company's IP and aligning it with yours. Let's say, for example, you have a t-shirt brand. You could contact anyone from Coca-Cola to Disney, even a celebrity, and ask if you can use their assets or their likeness to support your marketing or your product development. You can either sell it on your website or sell it in other places, and then you just need to pay them what's called a royalty. There are also so many different types of licensing that you can do. For example, you might've seen the word Gore-Tex on a lot of outdoor equipment. This is actually a company that creates a material that is really, really trusted. Even Nike is putting Gore-Tex on their sneakers because people love the material so much. And it helps align a reputable brand like Nike known for its quality to another reputable brand known for its quality. There's also other forms of licensing like music licensing. For those that are old enough to remember, you might remember the Cadbury ad, where there's the gorilla playing the drums to In The Air Tonight. And finally, those that are Alex Homozy fans, he talks about licensing his actual marketing framework to gyms all the time. Taking his business to a small business, allowing it to scale up to lots and lots of gyms. For the Udi, we did this really creative Nutella campaign where we would get people to buy jars and they can win one of 500 Nutella Udi's. People would be going through the shopping aisles and seeing the Udi's printed on these Nutella labels, aligning our brand with their really lovable, delicious brand. People would then go to the website, sign up, and would be able to capture email marketing leads as well. There is really no limit on licensing and it depends on how creative you want to get. But it's really important that we understand why branding works. Sure, there's the emotional connection part. These brands have built so much emotional connection over the years that you can now leverage on your product. After all, branding is earned in drips and lost in buckets, and these people have just been collecting drips for so long. But there's actually a technical element, something that a lot of people are underestimating in the e-commerce community. The best analogy for licensing is phishing. Let's say every ad you create, let's say it's a Facebook ad, you're casting that ad out there and you're attracting one type of customer. Licensing is pretty much changing that bait so you can attract two types of fish. You've got your initial customer audience that might like your product anyway, but then you've got this whole nother audience that is really attracted to your product as well. So you're basically merging the customer audiences. This is why licensing is so important on digital ads because Facebook is able to find these new pockets of audiences that it can target your product to, bringing them over into your corner. But the problem is not many people know how to do licensing. I certainly had no idea 
how to get it started. But before I teach you that, let me firstly do a shameless plug about our new mentorship program. No, this isn't a course. No, this isn't applicable for people doing under a million dollars revenue. I've got a free Discord for that. You can get all of your information free. I'll leave a link for the description for the Discord. But my new mentorship is called Daily Mentor, where we're gonna be going over this stuff, product development, inventory management, cash flow forecasts, all of those kind of things. What were the best licensing partners to reach out to for your brand? We're currently waitlisted at the moment, especially for our Australia-based groups. But definitely send me an email, click on the link below, and we'll get you on the waitlist. Alrighty, back to it. So the first step is identifying your ideal licensing partner. There are so many different ways to achieve this. The one that I think you should do is go to a brand that you look up to that shares a similar audience to you and look at the licensing partners they've collaborated with. That doesn't mean you need to do the exact same licensing partner. Remember the analogy of fishing. You really wanna get these new audiences, get something new in front of them and align your brands. But you may wanna do something similar. For example, if they've done a Bluey license, one of the biggest licenses in the world right now, you might wanna do a similar kids show as well. The other thing I recommend, if you're gonna to try to work with one of the major studios, there are gonna be some limitations on that around your size, which I'll get into in just a minute. But a great way to pick your licenses if you are working with them is just looking at the upcoming movie launches. For example, our Barbie collaboration was one of our best because they did such a great marketing effort and the movie was so good and we just dropped it at the perfect time. Another great way to find awesome licensing is heading over to Vegas, no, not to party, but going to one of the licensing expos over there. There'll be a lot of booths that you can go up, learn more about niche licenses or big licenses and you can actually get contacts there. One of the main things that will determine whether you actually get a response from a lot of these licensing is size. So Disney and Warner Brothers, they have so much legal paperwork that they need to go through that they're not gonna profit if you're a really small brand. This is where you need to niche down. Worst of all, you're probably not gonna profit because of what we call a minimum guarantee. This is really standard in the industry. What that means is to protect the collaboration, these major licenses will set a minimum amount that you need to sell. Let's say for example, your royalty is 10% of your sales. You may go to this licensor and say, I'm gonna sell $500,000 worth of product. They might wanna go, okay, I'm gonna set the minimum guarantee at 40,000. Cause you're saying you're gonna sell 500,000, which would be a $50,000 royalty because you're paying them 10%. But we really need to hedge our bets and we're gonna put a minimum guarantee at 40,000. If you failed to launch the product or failed to sell as many as you forecasted, then you are going to be up for that extra 50,000. Imagine if you didn't launch any product because it didn't work out you would still be up for that money. This is why working with really niche licenses and contacting them in the initial stages is really beneficial because they're probably gonna have really low MGs or maybe no MGs at all and they just really wanna work with you. This is why I encourage you to think outside the box with your licensing collaborations. Case Defy, one of the direct-to-consumer e-commerce darlings did an amazing collaboration with DHL. I'm pretty sure Supreme even worked with DHL. If you're gonna line your brand properly, you'll be rewarded for this creativity. So now you've identified your license, you really need to contact them. So if you're at the Vegas trade show, you're gonna get a card, which is great. But if you're just reaching out on LinkedIn, you've really gotta sell yourself. These people would get so many messages. Sometimes these brands do have portals where you can actually submit it. If not, just contact the founder on Instagram. Just send them a mock-up product that you've created of the overlap of your brands. And make sure you say what you think you can sell. Get them really excited about the collaboration. Another big part of this process is actually creating the forecast, as I mentioned earlier. When I was starting the UDI, I had no idea how to create this, but it is really important if you're working with some of the bigger licenses, they're gonna want spreadsheets of like exact sales that you're gonna be able to do. And it can put a lot of stress on a lot of your team, such as your product team, your operation team, and your finance team. So make sure you're ready. And then the final step is the funnest part, which is where you're collaborating. For the more established licenses, you'll get access to what they call a portal, which is just all of their assets. You can scroll for days through these things and you can talk about them, about adding them to your product. Then you need to put a great marketing strategy together. The marketing is key and a lot of these licenses will actually need to approve every single email, every single product, every single product image that you're putting their brand on, which makes sense, they're trying to protect it. The execution of all of this process is really important. You need to be professional. 
the better you execute, the more that they will want to work with you. About a year and a half, we saw the Australian Football League was selling a very similar product to us. We went to them and said, let us do it. Let us see if we can do it better. We custom designed every single team mascot and put it on the Udi. We even set up these fun interactive booths outside of the stadium where people could come and win Udis and sales were incredible. And now we're just extending with them because it's going so well. Licensing is a whole lot of fun and I hope more e-commerce brands adapt it earlier. Don't forget to like and subscribe.